The final class ends, and I'm set free for the day. Oh, yeah. Stepping out of St. Hammond's main entrance, I'm surprised to see my friends huddled together in a tightly knit group. Yeah, this is partly Damien's fault, but, like, it's mostly Mia's fault, so they can't be too mad at him. I usually don't see any of them after school. I always assume that they left as soon as the bell rang. Hey guys, what's going? Inko! Damien looks exceptionally worried as he glances at me. Inko, you believe me, right? Pardon? Olivia's nostrils flare with an exasperated snort. I didn't mean for any of that to happen. What's, uh, what's the matter, Damien? When Mia asked about that nickname stuff from so long ago, I just blurted it out. She didn't say she'd use it for something so... unscrupulous. I'm ashamed it took me more than a moment to figure out what was happening. Guess Damien feels culpable for what Mia said, but why? You don't know what that word means. Who cares? Inko, really, I didn't mean for any of that to happen. Hey, I believe you, man. Your heart was in the right place. Olivia told us what happened with Mia, calling her some nickname. Damien leans back over an unresponsive Olivia, hands spread in supplication. She said you were there, too. I was, yeah. Olivia, you loved that nickname way back when we were kids. Damien's words were dismissed with a roll of her smoky eyes. He really didn't mean it, Olivia. I know already! For a split second, she bore row upon row of sharp teeth before gnashing her maw in frustration. Olivia's nostrils flare out with a huff of hot breath again, and I could practically see everything from her day finally weigh on her. You're just being you again, Damien. Sometimes I wish you weren't, but whatever. There's a grittiness to her voice once more, but she continues on. She holds her canteen up to her lips, but drops it immediately. Empty again. The grit in her voice is back, but she presses on. And the nickname is just that. A nickname. I'm just... I don't want to hear it again. Especially from her, and especially if it's just to get under my skin. Olivia stares at Damien for a while before breaking contact to gaze at Liz and I. Why not? Wait, did I say that? Why did I ask that? It just kind of came out. Liz notices Damien still organizing his thoughts. Seeing as neither of the others are going to have to answer coherently, she sighs. Well, I wasn't around for this, but... When they were freshmen in middle school, Damien and Olivia would take the bus every weekend to an arcade in the city. I guess he came up with the nickname around then, and it stuck. Ugh. That's half right, but I didn't come up with it. I'd brought a chunk of change for us to play stuff with each other. A match on just about anything there was a quarter, probably still is. But I don't think I won, even once. Once she stood to win something, it's like a switch went off in her head. I'd never seen Olivia get like that. Some of the teenagers were watching too, they saw everything. A couple challenged her once I ran out of cash, and sure enough, she ended up clearing house all afternoon. It was all she'd talk about at school all week until we could go back for more. Only took like a month for her to be recognized as some local champion. Sometime along the way, people started calling her Hot Wheels. I don't really remember who or when. But I do know it's proof she's got that fire in her. Wow, yeah, that's... I had fun back then. I guess I forgot I wasn't supposed to bring it up. Have things really changed that much? And you did, again. Damien hisses to himself. Sorry. Just can't help yourself. But you're right, that was the best time of my life. The name Hot Wheels belongs to 10-year-old me. Not current me. Hey, that's a great story. To be recognized so well that you get a cool nickname? It sounds amazing. Being a champion. Being a winner. By all the disdain for the title. I'm not... What? I'm not a winner anymore. Because you don't go to the arcade anymore? If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's only like half an hour away. Olivia looks at Liz like she just recommended everyone watch the newest Netsticks anime. Well, if this story's anything to go by, I'd like to see you be a winner again. Olivia's breath seems to hitch for a moment. And I'm sure these guys want to see it too. Damien's the one that dragged you to our lunch table all this time, right? Look at him, he's nearly keeled over because he's afraid of losing that part of you. And Liz? 
I think I'd like to see why you and Damien are really close friends. Yeah. And just as quick as I gained the bravado to speak up, my words left me immediately. Um, I think I accidentally put Olivia on the spot here. Oops. Well, her tail rolls along the ground a bit in contemplation. If you guys really care that much about it, I wouldn't mind it from you guys. At once, Damien lights up. Yes! All right, Hot Wheels is back! You guys now refers to Liz and Inko. <laughs> Damien's shoulders drop for a moment, but he quickly recovers. Hey, if we're getting the name out again, we should go visit the arcade together sometime. I'd rather not. Okay, then how about a better name? Like, Death Roll. Olivia swings her tail around to trip him, but he's fast enough to jump over it. Damien's words flood out as he contemplates new nicknames for Olivia to try and appease her, many of which are shot down by her or leave Liz and I chuckling. Gradually, our giggles died down, and the four of us chatted a bit more about the day in general. Eventually, Damien and Liz headed their respective ways, with Olivia deciding to stick around. Most of the school has filtered out to their various homebound rides or their after-school activities, leaving Olivia and I all alone. Hey, I'll roll with you. Really? I mean, I don't mind, of course. Eh, it's nothing. House is only a few blocks away, anyway. Besides, I'm sure someone would beat you up and take your lunch money if I didn't. There's plenty of time to make it to the next train, so the two of us take it easy. The sun finally managed to break through the autumn clouds, making the walk almost unreasonably warm. Man, I thought the last day of summer was weeks ago. Uh, it was. I don't mind it staying warm longer, though. Feels pretty great to me. Olivia gives her chair an extra hard push, letting herself glide by unaided for long enough to stretch out her arms to bask in the sunlight. I might have figured you'd like the heat. Oh, what, because I'm a dino? No, no, not like that. I'm just playing. Relax. You're pretty touchy on that stuff, aren't you? The two of us finally make it to the train platform, nestled as it is off the main street. I can see the train a few blocks away, our walk timed up with its arrival perfectly. I just think it's important to be educated is all. Even if you're, what, the only human at our school? Olivia flashes me a cheeky grin as my train pulls up. I've got to admit, but her mischievous nature is a little infectious. As the train doors open, I leave Olivia with one final jab, something I know she'd appreciate. Hey, whatever you say, Hot Wheels. I neatly dodge out of the way of her slamming... <laughs> I neatly dodge out of the way of her slashing claws, stepping smartly onto the train as the doors close. Inko, you son of a bitch! Get back here! I don't think the train's gonna listen to you, girl. As the doors ding shut behind me, I can see an irate and still blushing Olivia waving her fist as the train begins to pull away. Still giggling, I manage to squeeze myself into a seat next to a yellow-scaled woman smelling faintly of hot dogs. Oh, it's the hot dog lady! You know, I may pay for that comment later. But the look on her face was totally worth it. As the school year progresses, the days start to feel like they're moving along much faster. A part of it may be the change of the season, however slight that change may be. While the calendar says it's officially fall, the only thing I've really noticed was the increasing number of clouds in the sky. Better safe than sorry, though, which is why I brought my fancy compact carbon fiber umbrella. Still, things have started to be routine for me in the mornings. Wake up, throw on my clothes, consider eating breakfast before realizing I'd wreck my stomach, Walk to the station with a feather light umbrella in hand. And wouldn't you know it, I end up having another chat with Mr. Ferris on the ride to school. Hello, Mr. Nito. How are you this morning? Doing fine, sir. Thank you. And how are you? I'm doing well. So, my niece told me over the weekend that you and Olivia were in a predicament of some sort. Uh, yeah, Olivia was being picked on by someone, but it's not a problem anymore. I see. Well, that's unfortunate to hear, and strange considering the substantial funding the school gets for anti-student harassment programs. What good is all that tax money if classmates are still ragging on each other? Ah, oh, man, anti-bullying programs are such a joke. If it means anything, Olivia knows how to handle herself. I was there to support her. That's fine, but the issue is this sort of thing shouldn't be happening to begin with. <clears throat> 
That aside, Liz has gotten somewhat enthusiastic recently regarding Olivia. She's surprised at how animated she's gotten. Ever since that get-together at Randall's place, I think. I'd wagered you'd have something to do with it, no? Huh, maybe a little. Yeah, it was certainly rocky in the beginning, but we've been warming up to each other. And it's nice seeing a different side of her, even if it's brief. I don't know, can I take credit for that? We all have unique chances to make a change, Inko. If you're good at grasping them, then that in itself is something to be proud of. How do you know it's really a chance to do anything? He lets out a deep, reverberating chuckle. Well, to flip our usual script and let you in on an old phrase a friend of mine once told me, if you see a fork in the road, take it. Yeah? Thanks, Mr. Ferris. Like my mornings, the school days have become routine as well. Slave through P.E. with Damien, see Olivia's new doodles and sketches in art class, watch Liz lose her mind tutoring Damien at lunch, talk shop with Ben. Though now I have to avoid Mia like the plague because she's surely out to kill me. All said, I think St. Hammond has been my best school experience out of... Man, I've lost count of how often I'd moved. Must be the fresh head trauma. As for today... It's been raining pretty often recently, so Coach Solly made us play more dodgeball in the gym. Mia was definitely gunning for me with the way she launched them at me with the speed of a catapult. I rest in Iataken's class, popping my spine against the curve in my chair. Apparently today's a short day because of some assembly, so the period will end much earlier than usual. It also means that we got most of the period to slack off, do homework, do homework... I glance at the desk next to me in the hopes of catching Olivia's latest artistic masterpiece, when I notice she's not drawing and instead only fidgeting. Hey Olivia, you seem a bit nervous. Everything alright? Oh, um, yeah, sorry, it's just that I... I've been hearing rumors that the school's shared drive might have been corrupted. Wait, really? Yeah, really. How could something like that happen? Not sure, but I'm scared that it might have messed with the art contest submissions. I think you should check out your entry on the website just to make sure it's okay. Technology, don't fail me now. With urgency, I take out my phone and type in the school's website. Fast fingers lead me to the art contest tab. Can this loading bar go any slower? Finally, the page loads in and... Oh. It looks like the submissions have been closed. What? I hold the phone up for Olivia to show her the page. The submissions have been closed since voting started last week. Uh-oh. Sheesh, I thought Mr. Iataket had spooked me. Olivia's all seized up. Well, that's quite reassuring. With the submissions closed, there's no chance of any hacker messing with them. Olivia doesn't seem convinced, still drumming her fingers on her desk. Hopefully she'll feel loads better when the preliminary winners are revealed. Speaking of which, when are we... As the bell sounds, the class begins to pack their things, and Iatican corrals everybody into a single-file line. All right, everybody, we have an assigned row, so stick together. Before I join the rest of the line, I look back at Olivia, who seems to be stalling. Come on, I'll walk with you. That seems to stir something in her, and she glances up to me while hastily shoving a notebook into her bag. Yeah, I'm coming. As we head out the door, I noticed Olivia shuffling her hoodie a lot. It's not a long walk to the auditorium, and despite Iataken's best attempts, most of the class splinters off to sit with their friends. Having expected this, he shrugs and makes his way over to the back of the auditorium where the other teachers are. Olivia and I are left to the struggling crowd trying to filter into the cramped theater of the school. It's going to be difficult finding some seats. It's fine. I have a spot. Olivia wheels herself down to the pathway, to which I follow suit. She heads down the aisle until we're at the first row of seats. There's a vacant spot where a typical seat would be, with a faded handicapped sign. Olivia parks her chair into the empty spot, to which I take the seat next to her. Best seats in the house, right? Can't complain. As the hall fills with more students, my anticipation rises. Oh man, I can hardly wait for the announcements. So, do you think I have a chance? Huh? Oh, maybe. Photography isn't super popular, but... 
Olivia folds her hands on her lap, staring straight ahead as her voice trails off. I knew that, but I'm still hopeful. Hey guys! I have to remind myself that this is normal. Hey Liz. I can't believe it's finally here. Gosh, I'm so excited. Me too. By the way, where's Damien? There he is. Hey guys! I'm over here! Damien is in the far back of the auditorium, yelling and waving his hands in the air to catch our attention. He's gonna get in trouble for that. Brills, sit down! Damien immediately stops and takes his seat. With tempered expectations, we both sit in silence for just a few minutes before Principal Scaler walks on stage and taps on a standing microphone. Okay, everyone, got a whole bunch of important announcements to make, so I'll make them quick so we can all have an early lunch. As soon as the idea of going for an early lunch is brought up by Principal Scaler, the entire room goes as silent as vigil. I guess when it comes to an early lunch, it's serious business. Over the next 15 minutes, Principal Scaler goes over important events coming up in the school year. <laughs> Look at Olivia. Most I would consider standard things like pep rallies for the sports team or bake sales to fundraise for upcoming field trips and even something about new clubs being formed such as the Japanese Animation Appreciation Society. Wait, that, that's a slur. Oh, that's a slur. Not the best acronym if I had to say it. Otherwise, it's all mostly boring housekeeping stuff when one got right down to it. I almost wonder why such announcements warranted assembly when the mood suddenly shifts to Scaler's next big announcement. Now that we've got the main stuff out of the way, I've saved the best announcement for last. St. Hammond is proud to announce the five semi-finalists for the annual Fresh Start Art Contest. Cheers and applause roars, loud enough to make my ears ring. Yet I'd be lying if I said I also wasn't excited for the reveal of just who had made it to the semi-finals. Maybe I was giving myself a bit too much credit, but I really wanted to be among those semi-finalists. I can almost taste victory, in fact. I turn to face Olivia and prepare to cheer alongside her, but I'm stopped in my tracks when I notice that unlike the rest of her peers, Olivia seemed to be uneasy about the prospect. Almost scared, even. Before I can ask Olivia why her sudden change in mood, Scaler continues with her next words, cutting my train of thought off. And here we have the five semi-finalists. The pieces of the five skillful students who had beaten all the other competitors came up, followed by the names of the victors right above them. Alas, I see no photography submission in sight. At least I gave it a shot, right? Aw, oh, man, I didn't make it in. Liz's neck droops down like a melancholy noodle. <laughs> I can't help but feel pity for the bummed-out Brachiosaurus. <laughs> Checking my phone, I see. Tell Liz to come back here, bro. I'm sure Damien's got that handled. He doesn't have to move across the room. <laughs> Despite my sullied mood, I look back to the semi-final winners and can't help but be amazed by them. Each artwork is impressive in their own right, their colors blending wonderfully, and the figures beautifully designed. It's easy to see why these were voted as the winners. That last one especially catches my eye. The scenic landscape with a setting sun looks stunning. If not for the slight stylization of the skyline and fantastical color palette, it could probably pass off as a real photograph with some filters pasted over it. I'm no art critic yet, but if I were, I'd label it as a masterpiece and easily the best out of all of them. Let's give our winners a big round of applause. The auditorium fills with the usual kind of clapping one would expect in an event like this. Polite with an underlying tone of disinterest, though one person felt compelled to constantly make a piercingly high whistle. We will be displaying the winner's art pieces in room 237. You're welcome to view them during lunch and after school today. Oh, neato. Principal Scaler continues the rest of the assembly, announcing other events for the school and other minor reminders. Behind me, I see the teachers start psyching themselves up for the Herculean task of getting some 200 hungry dinosaur teenagers out of the room and towards lunch without anyone getting killed. Principal Scaler finishes and waves back to them to signal it's time. All right, we're going to start adjourning to lunch. You all know how this goes, so no just going for the exit. Being in the first row, we're the first to get up. I follow behind Olivia until we make it to the hall. Hey, Olivia. She stops and turns a bit. Jeez, is she still anxious about the sight thing earlier? She looks a little pale. I wanted to check out the winning paintings a bit more. Want to come along? She considers for a moment. No, go on without me. I need to use the restroom. All right, I'll see you at the lunch table then. 
Olivia nods and starts off down the hall, following the flow of other students towards the lunchroom. Let's see, the principal said it was room 237. The first thing I noticed walking into the classroom is the amount of people checking out the gallery. While I didn't expect it to be filled to the brim with eager students, there's a decent amount of people here, about a baker's dozen or so. Maybe more will come when they finish up their lunches. While I'm here now, let's take a look at the lucky winners. The pieces are all set on easels in the back of the classroom. Some desks and chairs move closer to the front to give each one its own space. One by one, I take a moment to give each canvas a thorough review. The auditorium screen really didn't give the art justice, because now I can really take in the detail of each one by being up close. The color palettes, the brushwork, the subtle nuances. Yeah, I can definitely see all of them having a good shot at getting first prize. But now it's time to see the one that I've been eager to get a look at since it was first shown. From what I recall from Mr. Iatakan's lessons, it's made with acrylics, explaining why the colors of it seem more vibrant. It stands out in defiance to the other paintings in the contest, most of which were either violently absurdist and meaningless or muted still lifes of ordinary objects. It's a meadow of mystifying colors, the organic lines drawing the viewer deeper into the piece, and I feel as though this would be a place I'd wake up to within a fantastical dream. There's no rigid structure or forced metaphors here, just a fantastical merger of creative expressionism and real-world beauty. I feel my fingers itching for the familiar weight of my DSLR. This is a piece that I want to immortalize in my own portfolio. It's hands down the winner of the contest in my eyes. I simply must find out who made this. Looks like this breathtaking show of artistic talent was created by a semi-finalist winner. That's a problem. Ah, Inko, I'm glad you swung by. Looks like you're admiring the art contest entries. I told you that St. Hammond's artistic programs were unparalleled. That's not mine. What's not yours? I try to say more, but the words won't leave my mouth. Ben's eyes follow mine to the bottom of the painting in front of me, and I watch as he makes the same realization I do. Inko, you didn't... Did you paint this? I had no idea your style was so developed, so humble. If I had known... That's not my entry. It's not? No, mine was a photograph. But what's your name doing on this one? It must be some kind of mistake. A million scenarios come to mind. They, they must have got the wrong name somehow. If they did, I think the real artist would have come forward by now. Oh my god, I know what happened. Olivia wanted to see if she would win the contest, not just because she's in a wheelchair. So she entered her submission under Inko's name. That's what I think is going on anyway. Then the submission website must be hacked or broken. But our school checks for stuff like that. If it was, we would have known by now. Then, Inko, you're sure you didn't submit somebody else's piece by accident? Of course I didn't. Why would I do something like that? You're the only one who can log into your account, Inko. Suddenly everything stops. My account. Did somebody? Look, relax, alright? We can get this sorted out. Just don't panic. Ben lowers his voice. But Inko, just to be clear. But you didn't just get a bit of extra help, right? Ben looks at me through the edge of his glasses, eye to eye. There's some real stakes in the contest and cheating is taken seriously. Especially fraud. The word echoes around inside me. Broad. It makes my bones chill. There's ingenuine, faker, liar. They're all bad in different ways, but fraud is just dripping with frigid condemnation. No, I swear, I submitted a photograph. Ben relaxes his shoulders. All right, just making sure. Sorry to alarm you. It's perturbing how he can go from deadly serious to jovial like a flipped switch. You gonna be alright? Sorry, I need to get some air. Hey, feel free. I'll let Scaler know, okay? Yeah, thanks, Ben. No problem. Take it easy. Ben offers me an earnest smile, waving at me as he steps out of the room and down the hall. After some time, I follow him, shambling down the hall as I try to make sense of what just happened. I thought everybody actually liked my photography. 
but they all thought I was some kind of expert painter instead. I don't even know how to express it. I feel empty. I thought maybe my hard work was finally paying off, but... I submitted the right entry, so what happened? Did somebody change it? And if so, how? It's such a good piece, too. What even is there to be gained by putting my name on it? I wander aimlessly through the halls. The thought of missing lunch passes through my mind, but there's a different sort of emptiness pervading my stomach. Why is this rattling me like this? Man, it's not like I'm in trouble or anything. Ben's helping me sort this out. I'm at a loss of what to even think right now. Oh crap, Olivia mentioned something about server issues before. I couldn't see my submission, but... Was it just that? Maybe Olivia was right to be worried. Well, duh. Why else would she be so nervous? My aimless walking leads me to outside the principal's office in the gala. There's that one cityscape painting from the start of the school year. The very first painting I ever saw here, and still one of the best. Okay, look at it and realize what's going on. A vibrant cityscape that morphs the rigid structure of urban planning into a soft and inviting utopia, as if viewed from the eyes of a child. The sky above the city is a beautiful shade of crimson with radiant clouds clustered along its length. If the art contest submission was the best painting I've ever seen, then this one comes close. I can only imagine the accolade she must have gotten for painting this back then. You know, for a while, I got to have that experience. I got to step in the shoes of an artist much better than myself. Maybe that was the intent? All the praise, approval, everything I've been wanting? Just for a while, it was given by an anonymous stranger. Whoever that may be. Actually, this gives me a bit of an idea. If I'm clever and Olivia's up for it, this can be a cool way to get her to show off her painting more. Everyone would like that. Maybe that's what she needs. I could act as like a personal publisher for her so she doesn't have to deal with people. <laughs> Wait a second. I peeled down the empty hallway. I need to find Olivia. She couldn't possibly. She could, and she would. But why me? Why would she... Thinking about it only increases my worries and desperation to find who I hope to raptor Jesus isn't the culprit. I haphazardly check all the places where Olivia could be, but can't find her anywhere. My hunt for the Baryonyx leads me to the second floor of the atrium. It feels like there's a lead brick in the pit of my stomach as I internalize my current situation. The soft pattering of rain hitting the window grabs my attention to see a gloom-covered Volcadera outside. My eyes wander along the school's pathway, covered in mud thanks to the earlier rainfall. Wait a minute. Those look like tracks in the mud. First through the main entrance doors, and I met with the feeling of droplets hitting my head. Outside, a dark overcast is rolled in. What about your umbrella? The forecast called for on and off rain during the day, but pretty gnarly clouds. Makes it look almost dusk around. Crap, what am I wasting time for? I follow the trail with urgency, fearing that the rain will wash it away. Looks like it goes down the whole pathway. You have an umbrella. I ignore my clothes becoming progressively damp and the water collecting on my shades. Eventually, I round the curve that leads to the bridge and see a distressing item at its end. <gasps> Something happened here. You hope it was a miracle, but probably not. A wheelchair. Olivia's wheelchair. Empty of the occupant, toppled on its side. A new fear grips me, born from the mental imagery provided by that sight. Those cruel thoughts push me up the steps faster than humanly possible, even as my rational mind tries to reassure me. Running across the deck, my breath is caught in my throat when I reach the middle. She's on the ground, head slumped down. There's damage and soaked school supplies scattered all over the walkway. Oh god, is she okay? My mood shifts, trying to force me closer. Slowly, her head lifts up to the sound of my shoes squelching on the floor. Inko? Her tear-stained eyes stare at me with the dead expression, and her voice sounds weak. Olivia? I feel like I can finally breathe again. Slowly, Olivia pushes herself up, and I notice that she's lying atop a pile of paper shreddings. The feeling of relief slowly fades away, and I remember just why I was looking for her. We stay silent, only staring at each other as the rain continues to bear down on us. She simply sits there, letting herself grow more and more soaked from the rain. Do you want to talk? No, not out in the open. 
I grab my compact umbrella from my backpack and unfurl it. It doesn't do much to dry Olivia off, but at least she's not getting more soaked. The umbrella is placed between us and the elements against the ledge, forming a personal canopy above us. Here. Now we're alone. There's space next to Olivia to take a seat. It's... odd. We've sat together before, but sitting on the ground in the rain? And the room is just a little claustrophobic. There's bits of paper melted onto the pavement, soaked by rain, though torn apart and waterlogged that can sort of make out... a tree... A rough sketch of one, anyway. Like the one that stood prominently in my false submission. So you did do it. Anko, please, I can explain. I didn't have a choice. What? I know what I did was wrong, but I didn't have any other way. It wasn't a choice to not trick me? She avoids looking at me, focusing on the scraps of paper scattered about the floor like confetti. It wasn't a trick, you. I just... <sighs> I get it. You're mad at me. I'm not mad. I'm just confused. I thought we were good friends. I wasn't expecting it. Expecting you. She pauses to give her throat some respite. Her usual water bottle isn't anywhere nearby. A shaky breath escapes her mouth. When you came around, I thought you were no different than the others. That you were some self-centered, pretentious midwit who only cares about his image. That's when I got the idea of using you to swap out your art with mine. You didn't seem like the kind of person who cared about how he gets the attention from others, just that he gets it. Her description of my character feels really reductive, but the ache in my chest tells me it hits a little too close to home. But that's not what I think of you now. Yadakan is the one person I can trust. So when he went to bat for you, saying we'd make good friends, I was worried. What's so special about this guy? I honestly got scared he'd be wrong. That you'd be just like everyone else and I'd be setting myself up for failure. But worse than that, Inko. I was afraid he'd be right and I'd have to face what I'd done to myself. And now I've gone and done something like this. Switching my contest entry? She nods, swallowing hard. I wasn't thinking. Suddenly, everything was out of balance, everything I'd created, all my work, my own little world was suddenly changing and I had no control of it. I just had to do something. I... didn't know I was doing that. I'm sorry. She stops to process my words and continues. I knew I'd get caught. It's stupid. I was hoping for it, even. Someone to figure out that it was swapped so it would be changed and everyone would be none the wiser. She turns to face me, with silver eyes welled with tears. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I just don't want to go back to being the person I used to be. The person who didn't care about hurting you. Her head tilts downward with a violent hitch of breath. Ivory claws extend and grip at her knees in a painful display, and yet Olivia chokes back any sound she'd make. Her body shudders with every heavy breath from her, and I realize that every last defensive barrier she had was completely gone. Olivia's laid herself bare, leaving only the crying girl desperately trying to silence her pitiful tears. But why do all of this, or I can't hate you? Uh... Save. <sighs> What's the right thing to say in this scenario? But why do all of this? Or I can't... Ugh. I don't know, does she need... Do, does the scene require further questioning, or does it require reassurance? It's like Fang on the roof all over again. I don't know what to do. I can't hate you. Based with those unbidden words from Olivia, I have to be a heartless bastard to do anything but accept her apology. It's clear that the guilt has been rotting in her consciousness ever since... What she did was wrong, no doubt about it, but then again, thinking of her circumstances, how can I blame her? How could anyone? I probably would have ended up having to do the same thing in her shoes. At this point, Olivia's put herself through enough stress as it is. If there's one thing she needs to hear right now, it's that I forgive her. I don't hate you, Olivia. You don't? No, I don't. I won't lie, I definitely felt hurt when I first found out. But the fact that you're willing to admit your mistake shows that you're growing as a person. I'm really glad to hear that we're friends. It's refreshing to hear her say it. I was worried that she was only just putting up with me. 
Olivia seems understandably puzzled over my lack of anger towards her. I figured you'd be more upset. Is this just your pity? If so, I don't want it. It's not pity, Olivia. I'm accepting your apology. I don't want you to feel guilty about it. The sooner we can put all this behind us, the better. But I can tell you're a good person, so don't worry about it, alright? I offer her my best smile. Olivia slowly nods. You put it that way, I guess. But still. Truth be told, I deserve to fail, to actually face consequences. I'm such a fucking fraud. All over a damn painting. Olivia, you did what you thought you had to do, and you're saying sorry for the consequences. That's all that matters. I scooch closer to Olivia. Huh? That was you taking action in a way I never would have guessed. Uh, crime of passion, I think it's called. I'm probably wrong, but she gets the idea. The world runs on those. You don't need to change. I don't think you did anything wrong. She leans her head against the wall of the railing before looking at me with a half-smile. Thanks. You're right, I'm just throwing everything away like an idiot. I'm just scared. I'm here with you. I coax the rest of the tired grin from her and she looks down at the shredded papers again. After that, after everything was said and done, things became quiet. Beneath the solace of my umbrella, we relaxed together. At least until Olivia began shifting uncomfortably. I sit and watch as she takes her calves and shifts them to her side with one hand. Her tail comes around and presses into the paper-filled floor before her, keeping her upright as she starts to lean forward. Finally, with the strength of her tail and one arm, Olivia lifts her hips up from the floor and swings her shins fully beneath her. She smiles as she kneels over me. Are you just gonna sit there? Crap, I guess I was gawking stupidly. But it's just so fascinating seeing the girl maneuver herself in these odd yet well-practiced ways. I'm kind of jealous, actually. I wish I had a tail to do some of the things she could. I press my hand down on the floor and push myself up. I don't know why I had thought to stand, but instead I shifted myself to a kneeling position too. We're face to face now. For a split second, I feared the worst as Olivia drew me into a hug. I don't know what she would do, but this? I like this. For how strong her arms are, how they're wrapped around my chest feels exceptionally tender. My own arms have enveloped her, returning the embrace in a similarly soft way. And as her arms loosen it, I draw back, though I don't want to take my hands off her. That was nice. Don't make it weird. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Through the sound of rainfall hitting the umbrella, my ears suddenly pick up the noise of what sounds like squeaking. I look down and see that there's something shuffling in Olivia's pocket. A little beast emerges from its hiding spot with a squeaky yawn, to which Olivia offers her hand for it to use as a platform. She has a pocket rat? Listen, hang on, hang on, hang on. I know this is like a very nice tender moment, but this character has had an entire rodent in their pocket for what I can only assume is most of the times I've seen her. That's awesome, but how did she pull that off? Hey, little guy. Nearly forgot about you. Had a nice nap? That's a rat. All right, you two haven't met each other. Inko, this is Guts. Guts, meet Inko. Uh, uh, hi, Guts. I awkwardly rave at the apprehensive-looking rodent. Olivia lifts Guts to her shoulder gracefully, like her hand is an elevator for him. You brought him to school? Well, yeah, I just really needed him today since, you know, all the crap that's happened. He's an emotional support rat! Emotional support rat, let's go! She gives Guts a few scritches under his chin. I bring him sometimes when things get rough. And nobody noticed? You hadn't. Touché. He had a can did once. He just told me not to let him run around the school, otherwise it would be considered a health hazard or something. The tardy bell rings out in the distance. We're late for our next classes. I'm sure Iadakan will understand. We should probably get back to class. Here, hold this. I give Olivia the umbrella so she and the rat can stay dry while I go fetch the wheelchair. By now it's settled some into the mud. This wheelchair has definitely seen better days. After dusting off the dirt and pooling water the best I can, I make my way back. Thanks. She offers the umbrella back, but I make sure to hold it above her. I keep the wheelchair steady with one hand as Olivia climbs into the seat, using her tail to help herself up. Ah! We stand in the rain in silence for a moment, only sharing content glances. So what do we do about the contest now? That's a good question. Ben was there when I saw my name on the painting. He already went to tell someone. 
So, like you said, no harm, no foul. About your own submission. I ruined it. I scratched the back of my head. It wouldn't have won anyway, it's just a picture. Oh. I thought it was pretty okay. Hearing those words from Olivia sends a strange flash of heat to my face. It's not unpleasant, but again, those honest words from her really do cut through me for some reason. Thanks. A loud squeak draws my eyes to Guts as he stands atop Olivia's shoulder. Uh, you too? A wry smile stretches across Olivia's face. Mm, I think it means Guts is saying that it's actually so-so. Hey. Cut him some slack, Guts. Inko didn't have any time to make anything for the contest. He's got some high standards. Yep, it's why I've gotten so good. The sheer absurdity of it. I don't know which of us broke first, but our laughter fills the air, heard only by us as the rainfall cuts off all other noise. Aw oh, man, I, I'm predicting right now somebody's eventually gonna draw fan art of like our rat tattooey situation where Guts is pulling Olivia's hair and he's actually the one painting. <laughs> So, uh, now what? I don't know. I don't want to go yet. Still pretty worn out. Worn out? A smile crosses my face as a wicked idea comes to mind. Well, too bad. What? I walk around behind Olivia, grinning like a mad idiot. Inko, what are you doing? Inko? Inko? Her head tries to follow me as I stand right behind her chair. I figured that pushing your chair around is really tiring, so how about I help you out? Olivia blushes and looks away. Fine, but just for today. Returning to the campus was certainly awkward. Passerby shoot us looks. It's not the most common scene to see a girl in a wheelchair just roll in, sopping wet, tracking mud in. More likely, though, it was because said girl had taken to using my umbrella to hide herself from those looks. She was already extremely red in her face. It was a conundrum. Drop the umbrella and let people see her, or keep it up and draw more attention. Hmm, I shall name it the Nito Theorem. She's going to kill me if I ever attempt to publish it. But making our way back to Olivia's current class, she simply shook her still-concealed head. I didn't really have much of a choice. From all that I knew of the girl, her last classes were all on upper levels. And she was in possession of the elevator key. And I was in possession of the weakest knees here in St. Hammond, at least according to Coach Solly. So I wheeled her into my current photography class. On the way over, she keeps bending her head back to peek at me. Like she's making sure I'm still there.